Here's how to do basic text formatting in TiddlyWiki. If you don't know what TiddlyWiki is already, it is a digital offline notebook that can be used on any device. You can watch my intro video if you want to learn more on what TiddlyWiki is overall, as well as how to get started. Text formatting in TiddlyWiki is done by surrounding or prefixing the text with specific characters. To start editing, open up a TiddlyWiki notebook and click the plus button to create a new Tiddler. You'll see that near the top of the editor, there's a bunch of different formatting options. Note that for this video, I'll be going over these specific formatting options. The first thing that I'm doing is clicking the closed eye button, which turns into an open eye. This shows us what our text looks like in real time on the right side. This is the same as me clicking the checkmark button at the top right corner of the editor to see what our notes look like rendered when we're done editing. One way that you can format text is by selecting one of the formatting options at the top of the editor. In this case, I am clicking the first button, which is bold, and this surrounds my cursor with two single quotes on either side. Any text that is typed in between those quotes is formatted in bold. Another way that you can format your text is by highlighting the text and then selecting a text formatting option. In this case, I am selecting the bold formatting option again, and this surrounds my highlighted text with single quotes on either side, resulting in bold text formatting. Lastly, you can manually type in the characters to format your text, which you can see from me typing two single quotes on either side of the text to once again format the text in bold. Now that we know the different ways that we can format text, we can go over the other text formatting options that I said I was going to go over in the beginning of the video. The first six text formatting options use two characters to surround either side of the text in order to format the text. Now we already know that bold uses single quotes, so we'll move on to italic, which uses two forward slashes to surround the text. Then we have strike through, and that uses two tilde marks to surround the text. Next we have underline, and that uses two underscores to surround either side of the text. Then we have superscript and that uses two carrots to surround both sides of the text. And lastly, we have subscript, and that uses two commas to surround the text. Now we're gonna go over bullet points. The button at the top of the editor that looks like a miniature list of bullet points will prefix the cursor with an asterisk. Anything typed after the asterisk will become a regular bullet point. To create a sub bullet point, add another asterisk before the text and this will create a sub regular bullet point. The button after the regular bullet point button is the numbered bullet point button. This will prefix the text with a hashtag. To create a sub numbered bullet point is just like how we create a sub regular bullet point in that we just add another hashtag before the text and it'll create a sub numbered bullet point. We can also mix and match regular bullet points with numbered bullet points. For example, if we start with a regular bullet point and we want a subnumbered bullet point, on the next line we'd prefix it with an asterisk and then a hashtag. The logic behind this is whatever type of bullet point you start with in a block of bullet points, you have to start with that corresponding character for that type of bullet point for the rest of the bullet points in that block no matter how many indents you go in, and that applies to every indent. For example, if we want a third regular bullet point at a third indent, then we would start it with an asterisk because the first indent uses a regular bullet point, and then the next character will be a hashtag because the second indent uses a numbered bullet point, and then finally we would add another asterisk to create a regular sub bullet point at a third indent. Next, we have headings, which are represented at the top of the editor as the buttons H1, H2, H3, and then the dropdown is H4, H5, and H6. H1 means heading level 1 and is the biggest heading, and H6 means heading level 6 and is the smallest heading. And based on that pattern, you know what the rest of the buttons mean. When we click H1, our cursor is prefixed with one exclamation point to create a level 1 heading, aka the biggest heading. When we click H2, the cursor is prefixed with two exclamation points to create a slightly smaller level 2 heading. As you can see, based on that pattern, the number of exclamation points corresponds to the level heading. Lastly, we have monospaced font. Selected monospaced font can be applied by clicking the AB button at the top of the editor, 
and this will result in one backtick surrounding either side of the cursor, and this will apply monospaced font as well as an outline around the text up until the point it stops. Alternatively, we can have a block of monospaced font by clicking the alphabet button at the top of the editor, and this will surround the cursor with three backticks above and below, and any text typed in between those will create a block of monospaced font that takes up the width of the tiddler. This can be better seen when I click the gray checkmark button to render the notes. One thing that made editing a lot quicker for me are keyboard shortcuts. If you press Ctrl B, your cursor or highlighted text will be surrounded with two single quotes on either side, and the same goes for italic and underline, except italic is Ctrl I and underline is Ctrl U. These are easier to remember because the keyboard shortcut starts with the same letter as the text formatting option for bold, italic, and underline. You can hover over the buttons at the top of the editor to see a description followed by the keyboard shortcut if you want to know more shortcuts you can use for text formatting. Now you may run into a situation where you click the check mark in the editor and your notes don't quite look right. This can be due to incorrectly formatting the text and can be fixed by figuring out the start of where the text wasn't formatted correctly. In this example we can see some asterisks and hashtags that look like they were supposed to be regular bullet points and numbered bullet points, and the majority of the text is formatted bold, which doesn't quite look right. First, we're going to edit the tiddler, and we can see there were supposed to be two blocks of text, a block of bullet points, and a block of numbered bullet points. Most of the text was formatted in bold, and I didn't want that, so I'm going to find the same place where I saw before the bold text formatting was starting, and I can see there's not a second pair of single quotes to end the bold formatting. So to stop this boldness, I'm going to put a second pair of single quotes at the end of the first block of text and then finish editing and I can see if the issue is fixed and notes look like how they were supposed to. Keep in mind that there are many more formatting options that are not shown at the top of the editor such as colored text, text alignment, tables, images, line breaks, and much more. Remember to save your notes and happy note taking!